All right, so let's, of course, start with the big story that we're tracking on Beyond Desa. And the top story is, of course, the announcement of the election schedule in India. The Election Commission has announced the dates for the general elections. The elections will begin from the 19th of April and the results will be declared on the 4th of June. The India's parliamentary election for 543 seats of the lower house of the parliament will be held in seven phases. There will be simultaneous elections for the parliamentary and assembly constituencies in four states. By-elections are being held for 26 assembly seats in the states of Bihar, Gujarat, Haryana, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu. The first phase of polling will begin on the 19th of April for a total of 102 seats. The second phase of polling will be held on the 26th of April for 89 seats. In the third phase of polling on the 7th of May, 94 seats will be up for grabs. The fourth phase of polling will be on the 13th of May with 96 seats on offer. And the fifth phase will be on the 20th of May with 49 seats. The sixth phase of polling will be on the 26th of May for, 20, for 57 seats. And lastly, the seventh phase will be on the 1st of June for a total of 57 seats. Uh, schedule of the Lok Sabha poll, we'll do it in seven phases, as was done last time. Seven phases. And in the country, we will count the count in 4 June. Arunachal Pradesh, which has about 60 assembly seats and two Lok Sabha seats, will vote in both elections simultaneously on the 19th of April. Sikkim, with 32 assembly seats, will vote on the 19th of April. Voting for 175 assembly seats in Andhra Pradesh will be on the 13th of May. In Odisha, the assembly elections will be held in two phases. Voting for 42 seats in, on the 25th of May and for 42 seats on the 1st of June. Maharashtra, which is one of India's most popular states, will hold the election in five out of the seven phases. Three states will conduct the voting in all seven phases. The states with most poll dates include that of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. A total of 968 million people are eligible to cast their vote in over 1.5 million polling stations. In the last parliamentary polls, the BJP, which is seeking a third consecutive term, had managed to win 303 seats on its own, while the Congress had managed to get just about 52. The BJP, led by the Prime Minister, has set for itself a target of 370 seats on its own. Now, the Prime Minister has been insisting that his Bharatiya Janata Party-led coalition of NDA will cross 400 seats this time round. But to give us more perspective, we're being joined in by my colleague Siddhant Sibyl, who's of course joining us from New Delhi, and Siddhant MP is joining us from Chennai. Siddhant, let me actually start with you. You were at the press conference where the Chief Election Commissioner of India announced the poll dates. This is, of course, the sounding of the poll bugle. And with this, the electoral process, of course, begins. Take us through as to what, of course, is to unfold from now till the 4th of June when the final results will be announced. Well, Mohammed, India begins its two-month-long election cycle. The first day of the voting, of course, is on 19th of April. The results on 4th of June. But essentially, seven phases where, of course, 97 crore Indians, eligible Indians who can vote, will be going to polls. 1.5 crore first-term voters people between the age of 18 and 19. Uh, we know it's a mammoth exercise. Uh, roughly 55 lakh EVMs will be used in 10.5 lakh polling booths across the length and breadth of the country. They will leave, be leaving no stone unturned to make sure that when it comes to uh, the, the, the election process, the conducting of the election process, and every Indian who is eligible getting the chance to vote, uh, uh, that opportunity will be provided. The biggest challenge, of course, the election commissioner pointed out to the uh, issue of use of muscle, and India will be using drones uh, to observe that there is no violence. Uh, also, social media will be monitored for whether it's hate speech, whether it is misinformation as well. The model code of conduct effect from uh, the announcements of uh, the date and essentially as one-sixth of the humanity goes for polls, the big focus will be on charge atmosphere but also how smooth 
will be happening as well. We know that the election commission uh, also announced the dates for state uh, uh, assemblies, whether it's right. Natural Pradesh, Sikkim, uh, Andhra Pradesh, and Odisha, or by polls. Absolutely. It will be big for India in several ways. Indeed. Uh, stay, stay on with me, Siddharth. Let me also bring in our colleague from Chennai, Siddharth MP, who's been tracking the developments very closely. Siddharth, you know, the elections are, of course, going to be very crucial. The Indian Prime Minister is gunning for a third straight term. And he set for himself a target of 370 seats for the Bharatiya Janata Party on its own. Now, for the Bharatiya Janata Party to be winning all these number of seats, it'll have to expand in the south. And one of the key states is the state of Tamil Nadu. Tell us about the politics in the state of Tamil Nadu. Dravidian politics has been markedly different from the manner in which the North Indian politics actually works. So absolutely, Saleh, like you rightly pointed out, uh, this is a different kind of landscape for politics per se. So the political parties here assert quite proudly that the political culture of the state is completely different from the rest of the parts of the country. And here it's mostly about state rights, state autonomy, it's about language, it's about culture, it's about identity. So that's the Dravidian politics and the history itself. This entire movement for the last 50 to 55 years has focused around state rights, uh, autonomy and also Tamil language and Tamil culture. So these have always featured high on the priority list of the politicians from this part of the country. And they also have their own model of governance that they've boasted of all these years. And it has also delivered and they also hold it, uh, you know, with a lot of pride that uh, this part of the country, particularly the South, the Kerala and Tamil Nadu, particularly, they are known for very high human develop, uh, development indices, very high rates of education, very high rates of per capita income. So these are some of the achievements that they bring to the fore and say that it's always important to have your voice heard in the parliament by people who represent you and who are otherwise from here itself. So that is the kind of message that the parties from here have always put to the fore. And let's also keep in mind that it is in such a landscape that the BJP hopes to make forays, not just in Tamil Nadu, but in large parts of South India. So Karnataka is their stronghold at this point in time. So they won more than 80% of the seats last time in Karnataka. Uh, so Karnataka is their stronghold and bastion. But when it comes to Tamil Nadu, last time they just got about a single seat. That too, their ally got it and it was not the BJP itself. So this right. time around, going alone, it will be interesting to see how the Saffron Party fares because their ambitions are big and they're betting big on a couple of constituencies. But how will it happen in a three-cornered fight where the DMK, AIA, DMK and the BJP are going it alone? That's something we'll have to watch out for. You know, a lot of criticism that's centered around the Bharatiya Janata Party as to why it has not been able to expand in the South is because it does not have prominent faces in the South. The BJP seems to be relying on the charisma of the Prime Minister, who of course is vastly and wildly popular in the northern Hindi-speaking belt. But when you reach out to the southern states, leave out the state of Karnataka for a moment, but in places like Tamil Nadu and Kerala, does the BJP have a face that they can actually project to get votes? So as far as a face is concerned, uh, in Tamil Nadu at least the BJP has a face and it's uh, Annamalai who's been you know, at the hem of affairs for more than two years now. So as far as he's concerned, he's a young face and he's also a son of the soil. So he's been able to invigorate the party and that's seen in much of their rallies. It's seen in the way you know their, their politics has evolved over the months and over the years. What we can say is of course the Prime Minister is a popular face and he's also been making his own outreach by you know, quoting from Tamil couplets, quoting from Tirukural, you know, speaking about Tamil Nadu and speaking about the language Tamil being the oldest in the world. He's been making his own efforts to reach out to the people and also capture their hearts and minds. So, of course, there is a prime ministerial face, but we also have to remember that this is not a uh, presidential poll. As much as there are prime ministerial faces uh, uh, for the BJP, we have to remember that this is not a presidential poll and also regional faces matter. So, down south, of course, in Kerala, there are different candidates that the BJP has has fielded some popular faces like actor Suresh Gopi that we have to talk about, a very, very popular face in Kerala and now they've fielded him in Trishur. So that is something to watch out for. Then there's 
Rajiv Chandrasekhar, the IT minister, again, a Keralite who they fielded in Tiruvannathapuram against Shashi Tharoor. Of course, right. the candidate list for Tamil Nadu is not out yet. But what we can say is that it's not just about the Prime Minister. They also want son of the soil uh, kind of faces to fight from here. Men and women who are ethnically from here, who belong here to represent that message of the Prime Minister and take it forward. And so that they can represent the, the interests of the people language here. There, because, because language is such and an language important part of the identity. That's, that's of course going to be crucial. You know, people who can of course go and speak to the locals in the local language there. That's, that's going to be a crucial part. And I'm told that we also have my colleague Idris joining us from Srinagar. Idris, this, this of course is a big election in Jammu and Kashmir. It is now a union territory. It's an erstwhile state. There are five seats on offer. The BJP has been working very, very hard. The Prime Minister has made it almost a personal issue for him. He has said that he wants to bring about development in Jammu and Kashmir. He wants to change Jammu and Kashmir. And the people there are getting a chance to vote for the Lok Sabha elections. A lot of people were expecting the elections perhaps could also be announced for the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly. But that, of course, has not happened. Tell us what the mood like in Jammu and Kashmir at this moment with respect to the elections and also which way the people are likely to vote there. Well, absolutely, Saleh. A lot of disappointment, especially among the political circuits across Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, the regional political parties uh, in the last uh, few weeks uh, that the consultations were held with the Chief Election Commission, in that also had suggested that both the elections, parliamentary as well as uh, the assembly elections, should be held in the Kashmir Valley. It's been uh, 10 years. 2014 was the last time when uh, the assembly elections were held in Jammu and Kashmir. And in 2019, uh, the uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the Article 370 was revoked. And after that, no elections have been held uh, in the Union territory. Uh, now, political parties also uh, questioning that uh, since the Chief Election Commission announced that there will be elections in four states across India, assembly elections, uh, why couldn't they hold it in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir? Uh, National Conference specially has come out. Uh, the National Conference patron Farooq Abdullah as well as his son who is the former Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir Umar Abdullah has also tweeted a while ago uh, criticizing the move from the uh, Election Commission as well as the government. Uh, although the Supreme Court has made it very clear to the central government that uh, the Assembly elections have to be held in Jammu and Kashmir uh, before September 2024. Uh, so it's it needs to be seen whether the elections would now be held uh, in the month of uh, August or right. in the month of September. Uh, but people were eagerly waiting uh, for uh, both the elections taking place in Kashmir simultaneously. Uh, although we are also being told that the security agencies also held meetings with uh, the Chief Election Commission, uh, telling them that uh, it will not be feasible for the security agencies right. to provide security for holding both the elections at the same time, especially in the Kashmir region. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed to all my colleagues, Siddharth. MP from Chennai to Idris Loan from Srinagar and to Sidhan Sibyl from New Delhi for joining us on this broadcast. This, of course, is an election that we'll track very closely on Vyond. And we also earlier spoke with Mr. Harish Bijur, who joined us live from Bengaluru. Harish Bijur is a brand and a business strategy specialist. And this is what he had to say on the announcement that's been made about the electoral dates. Listen in. Oh, yes, it's a very long election. Uh, I think the challenges are many. And these challenges can only be tackled by a multi-phase set of elections. Uh, we are having a, a total of 968 million people who are eligible voters. Assume that 700 million of them turn up at the polling booth because typical ratios have been about 67% turn up. So 700 million across seven phases with parliamentary forces and other forces you know, moving, the police, the entire bureaucracy, uh, moving face to face, I think this is the only way to do it. A multi-phase poll is a more peaceful poll. It is a much more reliable poll, and it's a poll you can respect. So needs to be appreciated the dynamics of diversity, the dynamics of geography, and the dynamics of sheer numbers. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.